fellow hobbyists, collectors, and pro heads alike, I want to welcome you to my channel, Predator Collectibles. I am your host, Glendon Taylor, and we take a look at anything underneath the Predator franchise, from action figures, comic book statues, prop replicas. I came back last week from the Huntsville Comic and Pop Culture Expo. I had a fantastic time there. And now if you're new to this channel, click on that subscribe button as well as the bell notification when you're notified when all my videos are uploaded. And all the links to the interviews that I did at the event will be at the end of this video, so make sure you stick around for that. I interviewed Jim Shooter, Arthur Sidom, and Sam De La Rosa, all three of whom have worked on Predator Comics back from the 1990s. So I hope you were really excited about that as much as I had fun doing them. Now in today's video, we're gonna be reviewing a high-end collectible that it seems I've been waiting for an entire year on, and they delayed it not once, but three times. In threes, always in threes. And that happens to be the massive one six scale heavy weaponry figure from Hot Toys distributed by Sideshow Collectibles. So this is gonna probably be a very extensive, very long video. So what I recommend that you do, however, is grab yourself a drink and a snack. Don't worry, I'll be right here waiting. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby. Let's all go to the lobby to get ourselves a treat. Now because this is a extensive slash expensive collectible, and when I say extensive, meaning that it is highly detailed and there's a lot that goes into a one six scale figure from Hot Toys, and I'll be going up layer by layer of what to expect if you've not yet ordered the Hot Toys Wolf. Now what is standard for a one six scale figure from Hot Toys is the Brown Shipper. The Brown Shipper gives you exactly what it is, the manufacturing model serial number, which I believe according to this is 443, one six figure. AVP2 Wolf Predator or WP, parentheses HW, which means heavy weaponry. So we're gonna go ahead and get him out of the shipper and we're gonna see exactly what the box looks like. Now, as you already noticed, you're going to get a plastic wrapping already on the box. We're gonna take care of that right now. So I'm very excited about getting this out of this plastic wrapping. Very simple, there's that. And here we have the box art itself. And I'm loving this. So let's go ahead and look at the box. We'll go ahead and again, as I mentioned before, dive deeper into the details and what you're gonna get out of the Hot Toys once to scale figure. So let's go ahead and start this review. I have to admit, I absolutely love this particular art box because as this is not a picture of a figure. This is literally a drawing or painting of the figure. It has Aliens vs. Predator Requiem on it, Wolf Predator, and a nice good bubble layout. I would have to say more like a emerald or teal colored lettering. Wolf Predator having weaponry, 1-6 scale collectible figure from Hot Toys. And on the back, it does indicate this product is suitable for ages 15 and up. Please read the, these instructions carefully before you can open this product. And so this party is not suitable for children under three years old due to small parts, which may cause choking hazards. And this it does indicate that this is not a toy or in fact it is a collectible. And it gives you the warning. I love the bio helmet on the back. I absolutely love this box art, but let's go ahead and get him out of the box. So in this consideration, I figured I'd give you a bird's eye view, so to speak, on how to take him out of the covering. So with the box art, you just simply lift him up and you'll see he already has a slip cover you'll slide him out of that sid slip cover and when you lay him down it shows everything you get with the wolf predator so you have the accessories on the left hand side the wolf predator figure on the right and on the right hand side you have heavy weaponry wolf predator going vertical and i really do like this particular casing it has a half cloak wolf predator on the sides and on the back of it gives you the cast and crew who is responsible for bringing us this wolf predator. I really do like it. I think it's time for him to get him out of the box. So again, the way you take him out, I've already opened mine of course to make sure it was not damaged in any way, shape, or form. Open up just as such, pulling each flap. Here, slide out. As you 
as you already tell, again, as mentioned before, so you have the accessories on the left hand side of the figure and on the right. Now on the very top right here is where you'll have the accessories and everything in with it. So let's review these accessories going in first. With the accessory package that you're looking at now, we have the shuriken, we have the four blades, two short ones and two long ones, the handheld cannon, the parts to the syringe handle that's right here, and two swappable hands, and the dissolvable liquid in blue. So when you lift this off for the covering, we're going to take a look at each one individually, and we're going to start off with this shuriken. I have to say that the nice good finish on this particular chromed paint job on the shuriken is absolutely beautiful and fantastic. And I do like the size and scale to the shuriken itself at 1 6. even has the gold paint to it, has everything that you would want or expect out of a shuriken from the movie. This is just fantastic and he does use not just one but two shurikens in the film and I absolutely love this as an accessory to the heavy weaponry wolf predator. And the other thing I mentioned before again was the blades and these are not plastic. These are die cast metal blades and I really do like this a lot and I'll show you exactly how they're die cast metal. Now normally when you drop something as plastic and say a glass bowl like this one it gives off a certain sound. Not very you know heavy just not a lot of sound to it. But when I drop the die cast metal blade in there that's so you can tell how it is in fact metal. The next thing we're going to look at is the handheld cannon and I really do like this cannon a lot. As you can tell it does have that nice good accuracy and depiction for what it is has also a swiveling joint that go left and up and down. This piece right here does in fact come off, so don't worry, it can either go to the tip, it can also immediately come off, but don't worry, like I said, it's not supposed to do that. So you can either do the tip of the barrel or all the way back in the position as you found it. But I do like this cannon a lot. It has all the detail in it it's supposed to have at 1-6 scale. And of course, it has all the amount of detail and accuracy it does in the movie. Because it does quite a lot use this cannon for firing it at Xenomorphs based on the fact that it was damaged. So it goes from shoulder cannon to handheld cannon. So you get this as an accessory in case you ever want to display the Wolf Rider, him holding that cannon. Now the next thing we're going to look at is the syringe. You have three parts. You have the handle, the capsule, and you also have the needle itself. So that when you take the handle out, and this is what I really enjoy, I like a lot. And this has the amount of detail as it would be in life size, but this is again 1 6 scale. So you have the bronze paint scheme, you have the curvature of where his fingers will be placed, and he uses this quite a bit in the beginning of the movie just so he can track down and follow the trail of where the face huggers are to get a good depth glimpse look at where the xenomorphs are located at. Now you're going to take, of course, the liquid capsule itself. And they are quite small, as well as the needle. And you'll put them together as such per what they are seeing in the film or this concept illustration as I mentioned before. You have to be extremely careful based on the fact the needle is plastic and it can break. So you have to be very careful, but it's not quite that difficult. And you also put the liquid capsule on the side. And there you have it. So you have everything together, liquid capsule, the needle, and I really do love the fact this is a hollow piece of plastic for the needle and the capsule itself. So as you're looking at this up close detailed look at it, it's 100% accurate. And this is again why I like Hot Toys 1 6 scale figures because of how accurate they are in 1 6 scale. The next thing of course is gonna be the hands. So you get one left and one right hand. And I really do like the hands themselves, mainly because of how accurate and again, how much detail there are on the hands themselves. I really like the left hand is my personal favorite because of the brass knuckles, has a nice good silver to it. And the left gauntlet does connect to the knuckles themselves to give a much more forcible power to break through any obstacle. And I really love the fact they did add that into the figure because again, if it wasn't here, that would probably be a big, huge issue for me. It does have the brown glove, the brass knuckles, has a nice, good, nice shine and paint to the fingernails, and I really do like these hands. I just wish there were more hands 
uh, that came with the figure, but I'm still glad that we still have two swappable left and right hands. And last but not least would be the blue translucent dissolving liquid. And I really do love how small and yet accurate and detailed these things are. And this is again why I love one six scale figures. I don't normally collect a lot of them, and only because of the price point, but I love how accurate and detailed and yet small this is. You can tell by the palm of my hand how small this actually is, but it has everything that you would expect for this to be accurate from Hot Toys. It has the blue translucent resin on the top and the bronze finish 100% solid resin on the bottom. So this is a fantastic piece and this does go into his brown satchel on the bandolier which will be on his left hand side of the figure. So that does fit nice and snug as it's supposed to be. And I really do like this capsule a lot. Now the blades you have to be extremely careful because they are very very sharp but they do go in nice and snug to his left gauntlet and the way that you want to make sure that it slides is these little holes in the notch do lock into place and they're again very sharp so be extremely careful but they do fit and I really like how they look. What I mean by sharp I mean by very very sharp so be extremely careful. Now of course what you're going to do for obvious reasons is lift up on the vacuum formed seal plastic casing as such move off to the side to reveal your highly prize collectible 1-6 scale Hot Toys Wolf Predator. So now we're going to look at the figure itself more up close. The next thing you're going to do is remove the plastic wrapping away from that beautiful 2.0 head, which is why I passed on the 1.0 version, which is the photograph you're looking at right now. I do not like the 1.0 version because I believe the paint and sculpt of the head were bad. It was a skinny body. It was just not my idea of what the Wolf Predator is supposed to look like, which is why I now have the Hot Toys 2.0 version you're looking at right now. It also has on this head sculpt the plastic quills, which I'd be please advised that it can break, so be extremely careful. It also has the accurate and authentic depiction of the dreadlocks, which are made out of silicone rubber. You also have the yellow and whited out eye on the left side of his battle damaged face, which I think is fantastic. The mandibles do come off, so left and right hand side of the mandibles do come out, and then does so the bottom jaw as well, so you can put on that bio helmet, which I'll show you here in a minute. Now moving down towards more of the figure, you have the fabric base netting, a bandolier showing off the landmines, you also have the gauntlets themselves, and the left bomb gauntlet does open and close with a painted digital layout. And also on the belt, it does have the fabric based threading for the shuriken, so they, of course, do move around. So, again, be extremely careful as they do not rip on the threads. And you have leather straps on the thighs for the thigh armor, and you have even the spikes for the legs and on the back of the calves. I really do like this figure a lot. So, the ball joints are stiff, which is fantastic in my opinion because you can put him in a pose and he'll stay in that pose. And just for fun's sake, I figure I go ahead and because of the joints are stiff, I go ahead and put him in this Captain Morgan pose. Please drink responsibly. So now that we've looked at the figure, we're gonna look more closely at what else is in this box. And I think we're gonna go ahead and take out the stand. I really do like this stand a lot. This is really cool. There you have the stand, alien in the head, and of course you'll have also with it the stand itself to put and plug in. So looking at this particular head of the Xenomorph, I love how much amount of detail is on this particular stand. And I really love the fact this is the Alien vs. Predator Requiem alien head. And you have also the stand to help stabilize the Wolf Predator. You just put it into place using a snap. Now the next thing we're going to look at is of course this necklace right here. So let's go ahead and take a look into that really quickly. This I think is fantastic and beautiful and this is why again why I love Hot Toys because and I'll use the tweezers to show off my reason for this is because these are individually threaded beads and this is why I absolutely love Hot Toys. Only a Hot Toys can where you get individually threaded beads and skulls 
and depiction of how accurate and detailed this particular figure is for the Hot Toys Wolf Predator. So these are, again, each individually threaded beads, and this is just fantastic and awesome. Okay, so the way you're gonna put the necklace on is you make sure that you have the neck, neck ring over his neck, because the necklace goes over the neck ring, not under, as it is depicted in the film. So you just simply, of course, slide it over the neck ring as such. And then putting the, popping the head back on. Now moving on, of course, from the necklace, we're gonna look at the bio helmet itself. So let's go ahead and look at this fantastic sculpted piece. I really do love this bio helmet. The sculpt and accuracy on this is fantastic. It even has, which is they should have done from all the other Predators, it has the wire mesh, which is also plastic, but I think this is just fantastic that they were able to add this into the Wolf Predator 1-6 scale figure. And it also has the wires attached to it, which is on the left-hand side for his breathing apparatus. Now, the way that you connect these wires to the back of the figure is you might as well go ahead and do yourself a favor Get some tweezers because you're not going to be able to do it any other way. Put the tweezers into the respectable holes and make sure there's a nice good tight fit like so. It's that simple. Don't make yourself any more frustrated by doing it freehand. Just get yourself some tweezers. It will do yourself a lot of help and a lot of less frustration. The next thing we're going to do is look at this particular cannon as well. And I heard a lot of people were having difficulties adding the secondary cannon to the figure, but I'm going to show you how to do it correctly, and we're going to do this right now. Now, the back of the figure, you do have a replacement part that can easily come off, and that's going to be the other part of the plate that just snaps off. A lot of people are saying that even though that back piece comes off very easily, the cannon does not attach easily as well. But if you'll notice in this particular zoomed in footage there's a nice good little plastic cut or slit that you slide on not snap on in relation to this cannon so you just want to put it and maneuver in position over the place where that back piece was and sliding it into place not putting it in place to where it should snap nice and snugly into the figure and you will have it where it's supposed to be in position as always now right below the bio helmet is the med kit and we're going to show you exactly again how to place the med kit on the back of the figure. It's very straightforward, not very hard at all, so I'll show you how to do that right now. So on the back of the figure you do have where it's a nice good hook in from, you slide it from the top to the bottom to slide it into place and there you go, simple as that. Now going from there, we have the cleaner kit, which I really do love a lot. And this has a nice good uh, depiction of it as well. So let's look into this much more in depth and detail. So looking at the cleaner kit, it does come by pulling onto this all the way out, just like it does in the movie, which I think is fantastic. And it does open up from the top, just as such and it even has the clear translucent resin plastic. It does not light up, even though I know my camera is probably looking at it as it does, but unfortunately it doesn't. But you do have these where once you pull it all the way out, just like this, making sure that these will also come and open as well. These are a little bit stiff as you can hear it, but that's where all your accessories, your syringe will go into place, your also capsule dissolving liquid, and everything like that as far as these two notches right here. Now just like the med kit, you have to move the bandolier out of the way, but it does also hook into place just like the med kit does as well, just from sliding it from top to bottom to where it can also hook into the back of the figure. The next thing we're gonna take a look at is the spear, which I really like a lot, and I'm gonna show you why. So let's go ahead and look into this. So as you can already tell the close-up look at this spear, this I think is beautiful and fantastic. I mean, look at this. This is exactly what I expect out of 1-6 scale from Hot Toys. This is just absolutely beautiful. So when we go ahead and we'll move it over here, because it does indeed open, just like so. And it's not just the one end that opens, no, all both ends open. 
So let's go ahead and do that. Nice, good, snug tuck. Sorry for the out of focus. There we go. It does open on both ends. So there's one end. There's going to be the other end. One and two. So there you go. You have exactly a one good depiction, one six scale spear, fully extended. And I really do like that aspect of it as well. Now where you're going to put it on the figure is for obvious reasons, this hook right here and it just snaps in the place like so and you're pretty much done. So the last two things we have is the whip itself. So you have one that is fully extended, one being coiled up. So let's look at the extendable one and see how nice and maneuverable this one is with the wire in it itself. So overall, I really do like this particular wire based and you can tell how it coils and moves because I think in relation to the silicone based rubber that it has for the wire, I mean, it can really bend all the way. So I really do like, you can twist it and keep twisting it to give it much more better realism whenever it curls or it hangs on something. And I really do like that as well. So of course, granted, as last but not least, but you have the coiled up version of the whip. So let's take a look at that. So I really do love the coiled up whip and it has everything as you should have it for the depiction or even the nice good blue right here on the handle, which I really like a lot. And even has, if you'll notice the leather strap, there's a tiny little hook right there it goes on his belt and this is exactly how we're going to go ahead and put that nice little hook on his belt which is right here and just slides into place not very hard at all but again this is wire so be extremely careful as to not bend or break this little hook otherwise you won't be able to display the coiled up whip on the figure and there you have it the one six scale heavy weaponry wolf predator by hot toys now I'm gonna be honest with you, I do like this figure a lot, however, I'm not in love with the figure and I'll explain why. The retail value of this figure is $266, not including shipping. Shipping to me was $23 and change. Having said that, $289, so for the sake of this argument, let's just round it up to $300. Well, what did I get for $300? Compared to the 1.0 versions, I did get the Pro of one updated sculpt two updated paint, three die cast metal blades compared to plastic. The cons on the other hand are way more than the pros. The con is the stand is a rehashed stand that they've already used it in the previous versions of the 1.0 so they reuse the stand. That's con number one. Con number two is that the med kit is does not open therefore we did not get a staple gun as an accessory as it is being used in the film Wolf Predator does use a stable gun to help heal his wounds after being battle damaged from an Xenomorph encounter. So that's con number two. Con number three is there's not enough genuine fabric leather for my liking. Previous versions of Predators, the classic Predator from 2010, the Elder Predator 2.0 from Predator 2, as well as the classic Predator from 1987 1.0 version, all came with genuine leather cloth. For their loincloths, I mean. This particular Predator, Wolf Predator, has a plastic loincloth, so in my opinion, that's to me no excuse. If you can do it for other previous versions, why can't you do it for the Wolf Predator? Now I know, as I mentioned before, you have genuine leather cloth straps for his thighs, and a genuine leather strap wrapped around, around the coiled whip. But the netting is fabric, it's a threading fabric that is intertwined into knots, to make it look into netting, there's even netting on the shurikens, and that's fine. However, I think that with the plastic loincloth is a failed opportunity, in my personal opinion, because they could have easily, just as they did for the previous Predators, used genuine leather or genuine fabric for the loincloth of the Wolf Predator. The other unfortunate con that I have is being since the med kit does not open and does not come with a stable gun, the missed opportunity was they can easily have used the med kit as a battery compartment for LEDs in the bio helmet. So instead of using these wires that you're now seeing, 
they could have easily, in my personal opinion, used the wires as both positive and negative wires to connect to the med kit as a better compartment to put an LED in the bio helmet. I love the fact that there was a wire mesh in the bio helmet, but to me that's not a pro. That to me should be already by default with the bio helmet anyway. But the LED also should be there because the Predator, Wolf Predator I mean, does in fact also use his targeting laser in the movie. So for $300 that should also be included with the bio helmet just like it does with the classic Predator from 2010 Predators. As a matter of fact, not only did he get LEDs in his bio helmet, but he also got LEDs in his gauntlet as well. So the other fact is that the gauntlet on the Wolf Predator has painted digital outlets instead of LEDs. The other thing is the armor does not come apart on this figure as does previous versions. I think that Hot Toys was trying very hard not to have this being a resellable piece by piece type of figure. So the armor on him is a part of his body. You cannot take him apart other than the accessories, the necklace, the head, mandibles and things like that to resell on eBay if you feel as doing so. But you're not going to be able to build your own figure like most people can or modify Hot Toys figures. So there is that option as well. I do like this figure, but I'm not in love with it. I kind of feel as though it's that horse from the Nickelodeon show, Ren and Steppy. No, sir, I don't like it. I really love the idea of it, but the execution could have been, in my opinion, a lot better. But I want to know what your thoughts are. Leave me a comment down in the comment section below what your thoughts are based upon my opinion and also whether or not you feel the same about this Wolf Predator if you already got it. Now also, leave me a like if this video was helpful into helping you decide to either get or not get this figure into your collection. And also, if any of the issues that most people have regarding the cannon or the wires to help me show you how to do it, did in fact help you better display your Wolf Predator like I did with this one. I did think I did a fantastic job, in my opinion, by displaying him the way he is. And I'll definitely keep him like this in my collection. I really like the pose and I really like how he looks. But again, for the price that I paid for $300, I just wish that he could have been a lot more like his previous brothers. But anyway guys, I want to thank you again for your support on this channel. I will see you next week for my live stream. Happy hunting.